Our final speaker is Bernadette Atuahine. Bernadette has a JD from Yale Law School, an MPA from Harvard University Kennedy School, and a BA from UCLA. She was a graduate at Magna Cum Laude. She, Professor Atuahine has a varied experience in the fields of law and international development. During law school, she worked as a legal consultant for the World Bank and as a human rights investigator for the Center of Economic and Social Rights. There, she received an Amnesty International Patrick Stewart Human Rights Award for her work with human rights organizations throughout South America. Professor Atuahine has served as a judicial clerk, at, judicial clerk at the Constitutional Court of South Africa as a Fulbright Scholar. There, she worked with Justices Mandala and Novo. She then practiced as an associate at Clearly Gottlieb Steen and Hamilton in New York, where she focused on sovereign date and real estate transactions. Professor Tuahine is a professor at IIT Chicago Kent, where she teaches law, policy and international development, property, trust and estates, and international business transactions. She's also a research professor at the American Bar Foundation. She's been awarded the Council on Foreign Relations International Affairs Fellowship and worked with the South African Director General of Land Affairs and his staff. Her most recent book is titled, We Want What's Ours, Learning from South Africa's Land Restitution Program. Professor Joanne has been awarded the Law and Public Affairs Fellowship at Princeton University and the National Science Foundation grant for her new book project about squatting in Detroit. Please help me welcome. Welcome, Professor. Good afternoon, everybody. I am so excited to be here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this presentation in two parts. So the goal, my goal is by the time I leave this podium, every single individual in this room is gonna understand what I mean when I say unconstitutional property tax assessments. That's my goal. And I'm proceeding to us. First part is we, uh, our, our nonprofit, which is called Documentaries to Inspire Social Change, created a three minute short video in the simplest terms it explains what this thing, what the issues are um, in terms of these uh, unconstitutional property tax assessments. So I'm going to start by playing that short three minute video. And then after that, I'm going to get a little more complicated. I'm going to actually show you the data from the study that we actually did on unconstitutional assessments. So the point is, if it gets a little too complicated for you with all the numbers that I'm about to review, don't worry, because if you get this video, then you get the big picture, all right? So let's first start with the video. To 2015, the Wayne County Treasurer foreclosed upon approximately one in four Detroit properties for non payment of property taxes. Once the properties were foreclosed, many were left vacant, many were vandalized, and stripped of everything of value. These derelict properties lowered property values and caused anyone who could get out to flee. The property tax foreclosure crisis in Detroit has wiped out entire neighborhoods of Detroit's most vulnerable residents. Poor and working class black families have borne the brunt of this crisis, and it should not have happened. According to the Michigan Constitution, no property should be assessed at more than 50% of its market value. It turns out the city government systematically inflated the property tax assessments of homes in Detroit beyond this legal limit. In fact, between 2009 and 2015, 55 to 85% of Detroit properties were unconstitutionally assessed each year. This led to illegally inflated taxes on those properties. Why? Because in 2008, home values in Detroit plummeted as a result of the Great Recession. But instead of reducing property tax assessments to match the lower value of homes, the government robotically copied the previous rates making only minor adjustments. It was no surprise that residents weren't able to pay. And here's the key. Many families were not supposed to be paying property taxes in the first place because they qualified for the Michigan poverty tax exemption. But Detroit didn't publicize this. It made the application process so difficult that it was nearly impossible to complete. So when we look at the decimation that unconstitutional property tax assessments have left behind, who is the blame? Working in poor people who are struggling to provide a home for their families? Or the government, who systematically and illegally inflated the assessed values of homes to increase their property tax revenue, then seized homes from families when they could not afford to pay? Join our fight to end unconstitutional tax foreclosures in Detroit. out 
for you what we're talking about when we talk about unconstitutional assessments. Now I'm just gonna give you another layer of information to make this thing more real. So first, in between 2011 and 2015, we, in Detroit, there were one in four properties were subject to property tax foreclosure. One in four. We have not seen this number of property tax foreclosures in American history since the Great Depression. Unprecedented. So the real question is, well, what in the hell is going on here in Detroit? Why in the world are there this record number of property tax foreclosures. And when we talk about property tax foreclosure, I want, because the mortgage foreclosure hit Detroit as well, but I'm, this one in four is just property tax foreclosure. So what in the world is going on? When I, so in the study I'm doing, part of it I had to interview various government officials, and, and Dave Shemansky, who was a former Wayne County Deputy Treasurer, he's one of the people I interviewed, and I asked him what was going on, he told me that you know, when people have the choice between paying their taxes and buying a purse, they decided to buy the purse. Right? And these are the types of narratives that blame the poor that you hear over and over again from government officials. Right? And this is nothing new. It's not just in the area of property tax assessments that we get these blaming the poor narratives. It's, it's, it's consistently in all kinds of areas. But what I want to do, what I'm trying to do with my study, is really get to the core of what's going on. And when you get to the core of what's going on, you find that it's not about blaming the poor and people buying purses. It's about structural injustice. Okay. And so what's actually happening is people in Detroit are being charged illegally high property taxes that, of course, they cannot afford to pay. And then their houses are being taken from them. And when I say illegal, I actually need to clean up my language because it's illegal to jaywalk. What's happening here is unconstitutional. That's right. One level above, all right? So what am I talking about? The Michigan State Constitution says that any pro no property should be assessed at more than 50% of its market value, right? And that state constitutional provision is backed up by, the, uh, uh, by a provision, 211.27A1 uh, of the legislature, and it's backed up by case law. There's just legally, there's no doubt that properties are not to be assessed at more than 50% of its value. But I want to just take, a, I want to make sure everyone in the room understands what a property tax assessments are. So this is how your property tax is calculated. How your property tax is calculated is you have your assessed value, and when I say minus qualifying exemptions, that means you know veterans get a discount, seniors, right? Uh, and then that's times multiplied by the property tax rate. So what we know is that Detroit has one of the, the highest property tax rates in the state of Michigan and one of the five highest property tax rates in the United States. So that second number, the property tax rate, is already high, right? But, but that's legal. That, they did that, that, that's, so now, what we are talking about, when I say unconstitutional assessments, that first number, the assessed value, is not supposed to be more than 50% of the property's value. And as Sonia so beautifully illustrated in her situation, you know, it was that her house was overvalued, and then she ends up with this huge tax bill that she can't pay, but a primary part of that is because the taxes they were charging her were not based on the true value of her home. Okay, you guys following me? So the, the, the key is why is this happening? So there's all kinds of theories as to why this is happening. I'm a professor, so I, you know, I have to only uh, go with what I have evidence to prove. And the evidence suggests that what's really happening is, you know, is bureaucratic incapacity. So you look at this, between 20, in, 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 20, in 2008, look at that. These are home price, median home prices in Detroit. The home values in Detroit plummeted. They went down precipitously, quickly, deeply, right? And what happened, as, as the, as the uh, cartoon tried to illustrate, is that Detroit, the assessor, didn't make the change. But why did the assessor not make the change? A large reason why is because there was a report. The government did a report on the assessment office itself. It, um, the Auditor General. And what the Auditor General found is that the state of Michigan requires that per X number of parcels, you have to have X number of assessments. And, and the uh, Auditor General report says that Detroit had less than 50% of the amount of assessors that it was supposed to have. So they did not even have the resources to do the job that they were legally required to do, because they were being underfunded. 
You understand what I'm saying? Under, understaffed. And so we have a situation where Detroiters are systematically paying more than they should in property taxes. So now, uh, uh, if you guys are scared of numbers, I'm going to lead you through this. But I do want you to see these numbers, but I'm going to give you the, the, the summary. All right, so what I did in the, in the study we did is something called an assessment ratio study. And simply said, it's supposed to be assessed value divided by the sales price, right? And it's supposed to equal 0.5. Why? Because the Constitution says that people are not supposed to be taxed at more than 50% of the property's market value. So the number you're looking for, that I'm, and the, these numbers I'm about to show you, is 0.5. Anything above 0.5 is unconstitutional. Watch this. So let me just guide you through this. I know it's a lot, but look at this row I'm highlighting here. This is the percentage of properties in each of those years that were being unconstitutionally assessed. Look at in 2009, 65.5% of properties were being assessed in violation of the state constitution. All the way down, uh, you know, 2014, you had 83.2% of properties being assessed in violation of the state constitution. So the takeaway point from this is I need you to understand that this is what we're getting the number that between 2009 and 2015, anywhere between 55 and 85% of homes in Detroit were being assessed in violation of the state constitution. Meaning that the property taxes that people were paying were illegally inflated. So people weren't buying purses, right? <laughs> supposed to be 0.5 as well. Now look at that, even look at 2009. That, two, that number is supposed, legally is supposed to be 0.5. 2.72 is 5.4 times the constitutional limit. That's the amount over. In 2010, it was 7.3 times the constitutional limit. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is severe unconstitutionality happening here in Detroit. So that's the first story. So these numbers, again, the, the, the point I want you to take away from this is between 55 and 85% of properties were being unconstitutionally assessed in Detroit. Now the second point breaks my heart the most. Because then as a researcher, we wanted to know, all right, who is paying these taxes? So we broke the data up into what we call five quintiles, right? So uh, the way, the best way to understand, so in quintile one, the average sale price is about $4,400 all the way up to the highest value quintile where the average sale price is about $76,600. You get it? So it's, it's trying to see when you break it up into blocks of you know, uh, uh, prices of homes, how do these unconstitutional assessments look? And look at this. My God. In quintile one and two, meaning homes valued at about less than $10,000, over 95% of those homes are being unconstitutionally assessed. Oh, so the very people who don't have the money to pay these inflated, illegally inflated property taxes are the very same people who are being hit the hardest by these unconstitutional properties. Over 95% of people whose homes are valued less than $10,000 are being unconstitutionally assessed. But look at what breaks my heart the most. Look at the other side of the chart, Quintile 5. Homes worth about $76,000. Look at that. Only about 16% of those homes are being unconstitutionally assessed. Okay, so the, the, the so if none of these numbers make sense to you, all I want you to understand is that the burden of these unconstitutional assessments is being borne by the people who own the lowest valued homes, who are the people who are probably the poorest homeowners, the people who can least afford to be unconstitutionally assessed. So those numbers make no sense, understand what I just said. And you'll understand why my heart is broken by, by, by all of this. So what, what are we doing here? You know, when you come across, so you know, when you do a, so I did a study, I'm a professor, I'm a law professor, I'm a law professor from Chicago, but I'll be right here at Wayne State all of next year, so I'm moving to Detroit, Ooh. super excited. <laughs> I, I do, um, my specialty is stolen land from people in the African diaspora. My last book was about stolen land in South Africa. I'm now working in Detroit, which is part of the African diaspora. Johannesburg is 80% black. Detroit is 80% black. Make sure to make these connections. I'm also working in Colombia with Afro descendants there. My specialty is about people stealing land from black folks. Yes. That is not just Detroit. 
with this tag, right? And so, so what are we all trying to do? Of course, we're trying to put an end to this, it's foolishness. I mean, there's just no other way. This is foolishness. It's just complete and total foolishness. And so the first demand is to really just stop these unconscious things and stop, right? And so after we did the publish and did our research, and we, we figured the, the people who have the power to stop this is Alvin Horn, the chief uh, assessor, and Mike Dugan, uh, Dugan, who's the mayor. So the first request is we're saying, for those properties, those low value properties, those properties where we know are being most deeply unconstitutional, assessed, we're saying across the board, just give a 30% cut. Uh -huh. Just 30% off, just cut. If you have a low value, just cut those assessments. Because what happened is this year, they actually did the long overdue reassessment of properties in Detroit. And things have gotten better, so I should be about that. That is a positive thing. The, the assessments used to be this far off, and now they're still off, but it's it's smaller. But it's still significantly off for lower value homes. So we re-ran the numbers for this year, which is the first year they did the reassessment, and we found that homes valued at eight, that $18,500 and below, are over 90% of those homes in that category are still being uh, over 90% are still being unconstitutionally assessed. So that's why we're saying, even after the reassessment, the lowest value homes, again, the homeowners who could least afford these illegal assessments, are still being uh, unconstitutionally assessed. So the first demand is just across the board do those cuts. We had a meeting, the coalition had a meeting with Alvin Horn uh, on, what was that, Mike? What, what were the days ago there? Thursday. 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 Um, and so, well, you know, let me not get into that. Let me not sidetrack. The second request is uh, we want to remove the, um, because Mr. Monica was talking about uh, property tax assessments is completely associated with water shutoffs because they're putting the water bills on, on your tax bill so that some people, even though they have the property tax exemption and don't have to pay taxes, you see them coming because they're about to get proposed upon, but it's for water. And they don't have to do that, and they need to stop doing that. They said they stopped doing it for homes, but we found evidence that that is uh, still going on in some cases. But we also know that they're um, they're still doing it for churches. So that you see churches in trouble now because they are still do putting it on for for the, on the water bill for nonprofits. So we want that just that all to stop. That's the first demand. The second is um, what we'll see too wonderfully talked about the property tax exemption is to make it more accessible. Right, and she really gave a wonderful presentation laying out, uh, what's his name? Mr. The, your client? Oh, Walter Hicks. Walter Hicks, we all heard that story of Walter Hicks and how difficult it was, they denied him, he didn't know why he got denied. You know, and so we're saying make it more accessible uh, and, and, and provide relief both, both forward looking and backward looking. We actually had a wonderful meeting with the Willie Dogwell, the coalition on Thursday, and, uh, 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 and it looks like it looks like we're making some progress there, but we'll report back out on that. But that's our, our second demand. The next demand, uh, I mean, that's the second part of the first demand. The second demand is um, on these properties, we need to stop these properties that are about to be proposed on real soon. We need to stop that. Put a stop until we can make sure that. Because how are you going to propose on somebody and we have evidence? I took my study to Alvin Horn. I said, before publishing this in the USC Law Review, um, we want to give you all a chance to respond to see if you have a problem with their numbers. He said, no, Bernie, it's all right. It was just a mess in Detroit, et cetera, et cetera. So they're not contesting the numbers. So the point is that what we need to do, I mean, we all know we're kind of in agreement that these are unconstitutional stuff, so let's not, let's stop these impending proposals. Who has the power to do that? Our, our man, Eric Sabrina. <laughs> Okay. And what Eric and Bree were asking him is three things. Number one, stop all foreclosures until the coalition's three demands are met. Uh, and number two, just stop foreclosing on people for water bills altogether because that was some foolishness in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one we're asking is to stop foreclosing on people who owe less than $15,000. Because right. there's another thing happening in Detroit. If your house is worth $50,000 and you owe $6,000, in taxes, when they foreclose, you don't get the the, the, the remainder of the money. Mm -hmm. That 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 for my math, forty-four thousand. You 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 don't. Know, they take the whole house for that six thousand. And so we want some number one to have. You should only be going through foreclosure for a significant amount of, of money owed, not for five hundred dollars, not for one. Many of you in here are presently going through 
uh, tax foreclosure, yeah. and you know you've been you tried to get into the step four program, and you know it's some nonsense. It's just a complete and total nonsense. You know, extra rules. It's just it's, it's it's actually laughable to the point where I talked to one of the step four programmers. She was like, "These are the rules." You know, the poor sister. She was just working. Doug and makes the rules. It's just a mess. Yeah. And so, Mishta makes the rules. Thinking about revising that program and also. You know, these hardest hit funds that they're using for these corrupt demolitions going on in Detroit. Now the third and final demand is many of so some of you are in the midst of being foreclosed on and we want to put a stop to that. But what about the people who've already been foreclosed on in the world? You guys are part of this coalition. You guys are part of this fight. So we got to do something for you as well. And actually, that's what today is all about. The second half of this program is all about you all, right? So that's what the people, so that's what we're here to do. So after I shut my mouth, <laughs> we're about to all you guys, in, on your name tags, you received a, a, a room number. We're going to, we have eight different facilitators, eight different rooms. We're going to break up into eight rooms. So and what we're going to do in those rooms is basically talk about what needs to be done for those people who already lost their homes. What are some solutions? Because what the coalition didn't want to do is come on from on high and say, this is what we think needs to happen, right? What we need to do is put those people who've been dispossessed in the driver's seat and allow you all to determine what kinds of options, compensatory options you want, what kind of reparations you want for this. And so that's what we're doing today. That's why we have these small groups, because a lot of times in a big room like this, you know, some people are shy, some voices get overheard, some voices don't get heard. And so we're breaking up into eight rooms where we can record what you're saying, listen to what you're saying, hear your stories, and come up with some solutions. Based on what you all tell us today, we're gonna aggregate that information, and that's what the coalition is gonna fight for. We have two conversation starters. One potential thing we'll throw out there, and again, we'll see what happens in, in the conversation today, is the land bank owns from 32 to 33,000 vacant residential properties. So, I mean, we've got all these houses that were queued up because of the unconstitutional right. assessment, so right. we're going to give them back. Right, right, right. Or again, some of these houses they give you require so much work, people might not have the money to do the work necessary. Man. Some people just might want money. Right. And so, we're, but the point is that Detroit is broke. Mm -hmm. And so, we, if, if, it, if it comes from the Detroit's bank account, that means you all are going to have to pay for it. Yeah. So it's like a double payment. Right. So that can't happen. So <laughs> again, again, use those hardest hit funds <laughs> instead of doing it for these corrupt demolitions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is 
happening to them. People around the world, when they hear this story about these unconstitutional settlers, they get upset. And, 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 and so, uh, as Sister Monica so uh, uh, beautifully put, what she said, you said, is a problem with, who was it? She had her look, something going on. <laughs> it's, it's a problem. It, it ain't your fault, but it is your fight. It ain't your fault, but it is your fight. So this is our fight. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to just go ahead and break up. And so what's going to happen now, again, look at your name tags. You've all been assigned a room number. And um, we're going to break up. Everyone now will have people to help you show you where the rooms are. But we're going to go into the rooms and continue the conversation. We're not going to do a Q&A here, again, because the point is we're going to do the Q&A in the rooms. So before we leave, I just see um, Willie Donwell back here. If you can just raise your hand. He's one, and we've had a meeting with him about the um, poverty tax exemption, and he really is making some significant changes uh, and really working with the coalition on trying to really make some changes on the poverty tax exemption. So we just want to thank you, Mr. Donwell. So there are some city officials with your best interest in mind. So let's just break up, everybody. Head out those doors, go to the rooms, and continue the conversation. Uh, if you didn't get a name, uh, um, if you didn't get a name, just come on up here now. Nah,